Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is door. D-O-O-R. Oh, Fenneman can spell. <laughs> really? You bet you're a life. More than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... You can do better than that. Oh, that's me. Well, here I am again with $5,000 tonight. Groucho, just before we went on the air... We selected a housewife and a man with an interesting background from our audience. And here they are, Mrs. Maxine Brown and Mr. Salvador Vara. Come in and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Uh, let's see, uh, Mrs. Maxine Brown and Mr. Salvador Vara. Mrs. Uh, Brown, uh, where are you from? I'm from Dungan Hill, Staten Island. Duncan Hills, huh? Someone out there from Nova Scotia, right? <laughs> Probably a salmon. <laughs> How long have you been out here, Mrs. Brown? Fourteen years. Oh, that's an odd name, isn't it, Mrs. Brown? Huh? <laughs> Salvador Vara? Yeah. Oh, I'm Vara. Happy to meet you, Mr. Brown. <laughs> uh, what did you say your name was? Salvador Vara. You have a very charming accent. Uh, where, is, where is your home, Salvador? In Pasadena. <laughs> South Pasadena, I presume eh? <laughs> Were you born near the Rose Bowl in Pasadena? No, Mr. Mark, I was born in San Sebastian in Spain Where? San Sebastian in Spain Oh, well, that's not far from the Rose Bowl <laughs> <laughs> That's where the 50 cent seats are <laughs> But I know Salvador, are you, uh, are you married? No, I'm no married you, you know, uh, How old are you? I will be 40 years of age in the next October 12th. October 12th, eh? That's Columbus Day, eh? Huh? Columbus Day, oh. correct. How is it you're not married? Don't you care for the girls? Why, yes, I just love women. <laughs> <laughs> I see, and you want to keep on loving them, is that it? <laughs> it's not that, isn't it? I've never uh, found my correct one, like in many troubles we have, men, you know, to find the correct one. Hmm. Well, how are things around the Casbah? Eh? <laughs> Or around any bar while we're at it. <laughs> well, do you have any activities besides uh, housewifing, Mrs. B? Oh, yes. I'm very active in PTA. I'm a den mother. I have two boys. And mainly, I'm a Beta Toastmistress member. What do you do? Bait toast for fishing? <laughs> no, Mr. Marks. It's a club to uh, improve women so that they can speak and go out and make public speeches, improve their uh, poise. And give them a, a... Well, how many poise do you have, too? Huh? I have two <laughs> Well, uh, what are some of the activities of your outfit? Well, we furnish speakers mainly for charitable organizations. We mm -hmm. do a lot of good in this way. We have one member who gave 150 speeches for the Red Cross last year. We furnish speakers for any organization that asks us. Beta never says no. <laughs> That's a nice thing to know. <laughs> Would you be interested in an elderly hypochondriac? <laughs> well, uh, Thymidor, let's find out some more about you. Huh? <laughs> now, Mr. Fenneman says you have an interesting background. Just, just what have you done? Outside of Pasadena, I mean. <laughs> in Glendale. Well, I have been... Uh... Mail career pilot in Mexico City. Mail pilot? Mail pilot, yeah. Oh. Flying from Mexico City to Tampico, Mexico. Mm -hmm. I have been a, a pearl, pearl diver. Pearl diver? In the Gulf of California and La Paz. And I have been a bullfighter. Professional bullfighter for six years. And Is that so? Well, bully for you. <laughs> How many bulls have you met in your career? Well, uh, We'll say just close to 200 bulls. 200 bulls? Yeah, 200 bulls. You must be the envy of every cow in Mexico. <laughs> 
Well, I'd like to go on talking to you two, but the time is running out. I have to be in Chicago in July. <laughs> so, uh, just one minute. You're going to play your bet your life. You bet your, for a chance at $5,000. I Right now, I want you to pay close attention to this. Friends, you don't know what you're missing if you haven't had a ride in the new, spectacular DeSoto Fire Dome 8. From its beautiful and functional new air vent hood, way back to its shiny new taillight, DeSoto is really the talk of the nation. When you get behind the wheel and feel the smooth power and instant acceleration from that 160 horsepower Fire Dome V8 engine, you'll know the real meaning of power. And if you're like most people, if you're tired of struggling with that wheel as you squeeze into tight parking spaces, then you'll get a real thrill out of DeSoto's full power steering. That's right, right. full power steering. Not partial, but full power steering that takes all the effort out of turning the wheels. Whether you want to back into a parking space using just one finger, or whether you're out on the open road, DeSoto's full power steering always responds the same. Always makes your driving easier and safer. So don't put off this great experience any longer. Go into your DeSoto Plymouth dealers tomorrow and take a ride in the mighty 160 horsepower DeSoto Fire Dome 8. Also see and drive the DeSoto Power Master 6, available in custom and in deluxe models. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth, the low priced car. Most like high-priced cars. So no matter what price range you may have in mind, you'll find the car you want at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. All right, now uh, let's see how you work together as a team. Uh, George, uh, would you explain the rules to Mr. and Mrs. Bullfighter? <laughs> All right, you bet as much of your $20 as you want on each of four questions. And the couple that earns the most money... Close. Gets a chance at the $5,000 DeSoto Plymouth question later on in the show. All right, here we go. Let's see how I can build you $20. You selected what's the number? The following are associated with familiar titles and phrases. Now, uh, how much are you going to bet? 1950. All right, let's see if you can name the numbers. How many thieves opposed Alabama? 40. 40 is right. <laughs> And you have thirty-nine dollars and fifty cents. Remember, you're going for five thousand dollars tonight. How much of your thirty-nine fifty you're going to risk? Thirty-nine. 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 How many horsemen of the apocalypse? Four. Four is correct. You now have seventy-eight dollars and fifty cents. Here's your third question. How much of the money are you going to bet? Seventy-eight dollars. Seventy-eight dollars. Seventy-eight dollars. Huh? How many blackbirds baked in a pie? Four and twenty. Four and twenty. Really climbing, you have one hundred fifty-six dollars and fifty cents. Mrs. Mrs. Brown is no schmo. <laughs> is your last chance to beat the other couples? You're going to bet how much? One hundred fifty-six. One hundred fifty-six. Fifty. Fifty. One hundred fifty-six. All of it. All of it. All of it. One hundred fifty-six. Fifty. Okay. How many fiddlers did Old King Cole call for? Three. Three is right. <laughs> And you wind up with $313. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. We have a waiter and a woman with an unusual occupation for you now, Groucho. They were chosen just before we went on the air, and here they are. Mrs. Mary Frances Starr and Mr. Woodrow Patrick meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Uh, Mrs. Mary Frances Starr. That's, That's you, right. I presume, huh? And uh, Woodrow Patrick. Mr. Patrick, you're uh, a waiter, huh? Yes, sir. And Mary Frances Starr, uh, uh, where are you from, Mary? Texas. Texas, huh? Pardon when you say that smile. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Who, who are you again? Uh, I'm the waiter. Oh, well, you're the, oh, the waiter. Well, if you're hanging on for a tip, you're wasting your time. With me. <laughs> hey, uh, you work at where? Uh, Moose Home Frank in Hollywood. The oldest restaurant in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I know your place has been there for many years. How does your menu compare with the one they had 30 years ago? Well, they're say, uh, serving the same food they did 30 years ago. <laughs> well, 
Well, remind me not to order eggs in your place. <laughs> what are some of the specials you feature at uh, your place? Well, we feature uh, sour rotten, goulash, and uh, especially flannel cakes. Flannel cakes? Uh, what yes, kind of a monstrosity are flannel cakes? Well, are they long flannel cakes? <laughs> no, they're like uh, crepe Suzettes without uh, the Suzette. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's Suzette. She wouldn't be caught dead wearing flannels. <laughs> now, uh, Mary Frances, uh, Mr. Fenneman says you have an unusual occupation. Just, just what do you do? Well, I'm a fight manager, a prize fight manager. Well, and how many fighters do you manage? I approximately have around 32 in my stable at this time. That's pretty impressive, 32 fighters. Have you ever managed any top fighters? Yes, I uh, managed uh, I, um, one of the top middleweights, my husband, Roman Starr. I managed him. Well, naturally you were mine. <laughs> any housewife can make that claim. <laughs> Did you manage your husband's entire ring career? No, Groucho. I managed him for five years and then sold him for $7,500. You're a very shrewd manager. <laughs> After five years of marriage, that's a good price for a husband. <laughs> I thought so. <clears throat> you better explain this. Uh... Well, I sold his contract. Well, after you sold your husband, did you ever see you, you saw him again after that? Huh? Well, a year later, I bought him back for tw uh, $500. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly depreciated a lot in one year. <laughs> what happened then? Well, uh, I got him back in shape. Uh, he had gotten beaten up quite a bit, and uh, I got him back in shape, and I sold him then for $2,750. <laughs> This is like a grocery store, her husband. <laughs> well, Mary, you've got the right idea. Buy low, sell high. <laughs> now, you're going to play your bet your life. Beat our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $5,000 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. The housewife and Mr. Salvador Vara won $313, and the secret word is door. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. <laughs> You selected people associated with birds and animals from our list of 20 categories. Uh, this is category number 13. Now, here's your first question. How much of the $20 are you going to bet? Mm, I think 19.50. What kind of an animal do you associate with Mrs. O'Leary? Uh, cow. A cow is right. Off to a good start, you have $39.50. That would have been a cinch for the bullfighter. Remember, you're going for $5,000 tonight. Now, how much of the thirty-nine fifty are you going to try? Thirty-nine. Okay. All right. What kind of a bird do you associate with Edgar Allan Poe? The raven. The raven is right. <laughs> you now have seventy-eight dollars and fifty cents. And here's your third question: How much of this money are you going to try? Seventy-eight. Okay, I'll take All a right. chance. What kind of an animal do you associate with Old Mother Hubbard? A dog. A dog <laughs> is right. <laughs> You don't go right. <laughs> You've now climbed to one hundred fifty-six dollars and fifty cents. And here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much are you going to bet? One hundred fifty-six. Okay. All right. What kind of an animal do you associate with Goldilocks? Ooh. Ooh. I mean a bear. Bear. I'm oh, sorry. Now well, what do you decide on? Bear. A bear, bear. is right. <laughs> Put it out. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the Desoto Plymouth dealer. And you wind up with three hundred twelve dollars and fifty cents. Groucho, we have a grandmother and a young bride chosen from our audience. Mrs. Charlene Lamb and Mrs. Jane Kerr meet Groucho Marx. Well, howdy doody. Welcome to the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the secret word and you'll win $100. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Mrs. Charlene Lamb and Mrs. Uh, Jane Kerr. One of you is a grandmother, eh? Now, don't tell me. Let me guess which is which. Charlene, how old are you? Eighteen. Eighteen. I'm still not sure. Mrs. Carr, well, what's your age? Seventy. Seventy. Well, I'll bet my bottom dollar you're the grandmother. Huh? Great grandmother. Well, I'll bet the top dollar then. Huh? <laughs> where are you from, Charlene? New Orleans, Louisiana. New, New Orleans, eh? Yes. Where are you from, uh, Jane? Do you mind if I call you Jane? Where are you from? Ohio. 
high in the middle and round in both ends. <laughs> now, I'm not concerned with your shape. I want to know where you're from. Huh? <laughs> Jane, you're certainly a youthful 70. How come you're so hale and hearty at your age? I don't drink. I don't smoke. But I belong to a long levity family. My grandfather lived to be a good old age. But he drank and he smoked. Well, what age did tobacco and alcohol catch up with him? 107. <laughs> Shows you what bad habits will do to a man. <laughs> Why don't you drink or smoke, Jane? Never cared for it. That's an excellent reason. Now, Charlene, you're the young bride, I presume. How long have you been married? Uh, five months, twelve days, and one hour. What time do you go through Lompoc? <laughs> how, how old is your husband? He's uh, 20 and 8 months old. Oh, you've only been married uh, five months, and you know uh, his exact age already, huh? Yes, sir. Charlene, you've been reading his insurance policy. <laughs> what does your husband do? He's a stock clerk. Well, that sounds like an important job. Do you suppose you could give me a tip on the market? No, oh, no. He's a stock clerk at Ralph's grocery store. <laughs> He can still give me a tip on the mark. <laughs> All he has to do is let me know when the manager isn't looking. <laughs> How did you meet your husband? Well, Dick and I, we lived in the same neighborhood. Is that his name, Dick? Of... Yes, Dick. Why don't you call him Dickie? Dickie. <laughs> and uh, we lived right around the corner from each other. We went to same grammar school and church and junior high, but he never noticed me until May 26, 1948. And it, it was... <laughs> It, it was the day of our A9 T at, at uh, Bancroft. The day of your what? A9 Senior T at Bancroft when we graduate. And May 26th, uh, I went shopping up at Ralph's with my mother, you know, and he was working there then. Uh, did you know he was working there then? Oh, I had an idea he was. And I was all dressed up in heels, and so he finally noticed me. And then uh, I kept going in there a couple times a week and got out to know my name. Yeah, but pays to have it, <laughs> Did you have the phone number on the back of the little blouse? No. And then June 19, 1948, as the day after we graduated, mm -hmm. he called about 6 o'clock. And, and, and I know if he could come over, and I asked my mother, and she said yes. So not a minute after I hung up, he was at the door. See, all I had to do was jump over the back stand. Wait a minute. You said go. Oh, yeah. You said door, that's the secret word, and you and Grandma are over here are each $50 richer. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well, I don't understand this. He phoned you and you opened the door and he was standing out there? See, he just he had, had a jump portable over, phone. Huh? He just had to jump over the back fence. <laughs> Running across the street. And he was there. Oh, and when was this? This is June 19, 1948. And then on uh, June 22nd, Tuesday, he called... You mean called... he stayed three days? <laughs> I didn't the grocery store while this was going on. I didn't have to go up as much then. Oh. And then he called and wanted to know if I'd go out, so my mother said yes, so he picked me up about 4 o'clock. Well, why did you have to go out when you were spending so much time together in the grocery store? <laughs> oh, well. And <laughs> I see. And then we... Um, now, when did you finally get serious with this uh, fellow? Uh, August 29th. 1948. At 20 minutes past 11, you said. <laughs> what did he do? What did he say? Um, he kissed what me happened? in front of the house. What's that? He kissed me in front of the house. He kissed you in front of the house? Fine place to kiss a pretty girl. <laughs> Is that all there is to it? No, then he turned around and ran across the street and stumbled over the back fence. You couldn't have given him much of a kiss. If that kiss had packed any wallop at all, he'd have walked right through the fence. <laughs> well, after he fled from you, is that when you started going steady? No, uh, we didn't go steady till October 5th, 1948. <laughs> the only calendar I ever saw with high heels. You say October 5th, uh, 5th, 1948, you started going steady, huh? Yes. You don't remember what time this was, huh? Eight o'clock. 
Well, I remember that fateful day. It was a Thursday, wasn't it? Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> well, what happened on this Black Tuesday? <laughs> How did you know you were going steady? Was he reeling back from this kiss? No. He gave me his track shoe to wear around my neck. <laughs> Gave you his track shoes to wear around his, your neck? Just one. Was his foot in it, or had he removed it? <laughs> no. It, it was his little gold track shoe on a chain that he got for being on the track team. What did your husband do on the track team? He was the best pole baller at Hollywood High School. <laughs> he was, huh? Yeah. He should have been. He got plenty of practice jumping that fence. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Carr, what do you think of a couple as young as Charlene and her husband getting married these days? I think it's all right if the children have responsibilities at 12 and 14. I believe in the young marriage. But I believe that if men would marry when they're 27 and women were between 23 and 25, they have good common sense and there'd be less divorces. Now, how did you arrive at that figure of 27 for, as the ideal age for matrimony? Well, I've known many people that married at that age and they were very happy. For years and years and years. Well, I think you sneaked out of that question pretty well. <laughs> Could you give uh, Charlene here any uh, specific advice about matrimony? You seem to be an authority on the subject. Stop. Think. Save your angry words, my dear. <laughs> That's good advice. If you stop and think, you can come up with a lot better insults. <laughs> Well, I've kidded you both, but you mustn't take me seriously because right now I'm going to give you a chance to make some real money. When I say real money, I'm not fooling tonight. Now you're going to play your bet your life. You beat our other couples and you'll get a chance at the $5,000 question. Can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. The housewife and Salvador Vara still lead with $313. All right, here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected drinking songs as your category. Here's your first question. How much of the 20 are you going to bet? How much? 19 19 19 19 All right. Give me the title of this uh, drinking song. Play, Jerry. What is it? Sweet Adeline. Sweet Adeline is right. $39. All right, now you got $39. How much are you going to try this time? Remember, you're going for $5,000 tonight. I mean, $38.99. $38.99. Is that all right with you, Grandma? Oh, it's all right with me. $38.99. Play it, Jerry. Talk up, kids. Talk it over. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. There's a tavern in the town. Oh, golly, yeah. It was so easy, you just stumbled right over. <laughs> well, they don't have... give up now. You still have a cent left. Oh, yeah. All right, you want to bet the whole thing? Oh, well, talk it over now. I don't want to... Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, everything, huh? Play it, Jerry. She can sing up, but you She doesn't care. She's happy singing. Well, it's the Whip and Poof song. Rudy Valley's been singing it for 30 years. They're broke, Groucho. They're, They're broke. Lost. Nobody leaves here broke. Give me that card. We're going to give you a chance to win $25. What color is an orange? Yellow. Now talk it over. What color is orange? She's only joking. What is it? <laughs> orange? Oh, this is all right. Well, Groucho, this couple went broke. You are fine. So that means that 
Salvador Vara and his partner, the housewife, with $313 in just one minute, get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $5,000 question. <laughs> Here's a good tip for all of us car owners to keep in mind as we look forward to another busy season of summer driving. Make safe driving a habit. Check your car. Check accidents. Tomorrow is the first day of Vehicle Maintenance Month, and there's no better place to take your car for a safety inspection than a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Here, highly skilled mechanics trained in factory methods will see to it that your car gets a complete safety checkup. Brakes, headlights, wheels, tires, steering, windshield wipers, glass, horn, muffler, and exhaust. They'll see that everything is done to make your car safe and sound for the thousands of happy miles of driving ahead of you. And you'll be pleasantly surprised when you find out how little this costs. Remember, make safe driving a habit. Check your car. Check accidents. Drive in where you see the familiar sign of better service. The friendly sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And here's Salvador Vara and his partner, the housewife, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $5,000 question, Groucho. Well, uh, Salvador, you're a bullfighter, but you're now on the horns of the dilemma. Here we go for $5,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help from the customers. You ready? Paul Bunyan, the legendary character of American folklore, had a huge blue ox for a pet. And together they performed tremendous feats of strength. For $5,000, tell me the name of Paul Bunyan's ox. What is the answer you two have decided upon? Blue boy. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. The, uh, the correct answer is babe. <laughs> so that means the big question next week will be worth $5,500. Well, you lost the big money, but how much did they win in the quiz, George? Uh, $313 in the quiz. Well, that's not too bad. Congratulations and thanks Thank to both of you so and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. <laughs> Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $5,500. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember... See the Soto fire don't make tomorrow. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Make safe driving a habit. Check your car. Check accidents. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast.